Hey, uh, I just wanted to do a really quick video showing how I use seamless paper to create covers quickly in PowerPoint. Now, a lot of folks show how to use Photoshop, but since I use PowerPoint, I wanted to show people how to apply um, seamless paper in a notebook. So when I get my uh, templates from KDP. Uh, in my course, I of course show how to turn them into a PowerPoint template and then I save them as templates so that I have all different size covers uh, in my uh, saved template area. So this is a 6x9, 120 page, which is something that I use quite a lot. So I do have it saved. I have my guidelines saved and because I have it saved as a template, I just uh, go to new and open and have the file folder. So once I have this, I just create a new slide, which is clean. You can get rid of this one if you want to. Uh, this just gives me that information that this is for a black and white book. Uh, it's a 120 page book, so you can just delete that when you're done. Um, and what I want to do next is apply, if I'm making composition notebooks, I want to make a lot of them. So normally what I'll do is I'll take the first book cover that I have, I'm going to take that shape, and since I have my guidelines already laid out, here's the little uh, wedge that you have that that's on the spine and what I'll do is we will format that make it black I don't want the outline so I go no outline and so now I have that little black thing um, if I want to do um, you can also go and of course uh, get a composition label um, uh, somewhere you can get it from Creative Fabrica or someplace, or you can make it yourself and just type in something cute here composition book, right? So I make that layout like that and then I'll center it. So I set up all my covers, my first cover, the way that I want it. I don't really want, do I? I guess I want that. And maybe I'm going to apply a shadow just to give it a little bit of depth. Then I might, you know, put some lines on here, which is typical of composition notebook. Uh, turn that line black. And then maybe make it a little bit thicker. Wait. Make it that way. Control C, Control V, do two of them like that. Okay, so now I have that. Um, maybe I want to change that shape, so I'll go to Shape Format, Edit Shape. Now, of course, I'm in a new version of PowerPoint. Anything um, beyond PowerPoint 2016, so if you have 2010, you don't have these features. You may not have these features like this Change Shape feature unless you actually have a newer version. So. I have PowerPoint 365, so I get updates from Microsoft all the time. So I'm able to go in, again, I highlighted that, go to Shape Format, you can edit shapes, and I can literally change the shape to anything that I want to that's in this uh, little grouping right here, okay? So I change it to Rounded Edges. Now what I want to do is I would also maybe put my logo here if I'm going to do anything or if I have anything for the black for the back cover in the bulk ones that I'm doing. I might do 20 or 25 or 50, maybe even 100 at a time if I'm just doing plain lined composition notebooks. Uh, I will have done my research to know what niche I'm going into and then I'll have my papers already set out. Uh, for what I'm going to use. Uh, maybe I get my papers from, I got these papers from my friend Maureen at Color Me Positive PLR. She has all kinds of great products there. Um, and I'll leave a link in the video below so that you can go and take a look at some of her templates and other things. And when you get on her email list, she gives you all kinds of great gifts every Sunday. So I really love the stuff that she puts out. So 
Um, these are some papers that she sent out this week, so I'm going to use those papers for some of my books today. So all I have to do once I've done this is I'm going to copy this uh, multiple times, all right? So again, once I've finished any of the wording that I want to have on here, um, then I will make my copies. So uh, duplicate si slide, or that's control D, and then I can make a number of copies. So we'll just make eight for right now, just so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to format the background and that's going to open this dialog right here. And all I want to do is I want to have picture or, uh, let's see, no, that's this. I want to have picture or texture fill. Now oftentimes it will put this kind of ugly thing in there, but what I want to do is go to insert and I'm going to go from file. I'm going to go to my file and navigate to the folder that I need to go to and so I'm going to select this one first and it fills in my notebook, right? Now this is kind of big, maybe I like it like that, maybe I don't. I would take this, I would also probably change this color, but let's take a look at this first. So I'm here, I'm on my format background and I'm going to tile picture as texture. Now you'll see that it already changed what this looks like. I also can change my scale and I do that quite frequently and I want to make sure that I have both of these the same, right? And now that makes it much smaller. One thing that's important to do always is to make sure that you have set your embed fonts in the file and in advanced, of course I go over this in my course, you want to make sure you do not compress the images in the file and you want to set it to 330 ppi. This is points per inch as opposed to dpi, so they're kind of the same thing, just different wording. PPI is exclusive to Microsoft, I believe, so they just are using this terminology. We'll go OK. So now I know that my, my output will be print quality. Now if that's too much, I can change this if I want to, to anything I want. I can say 25%, I can go back to 100%. I also can move these. Sometimes uh, some images are offset in a way that's kind of weird. So I really like that. I'm going to leave that as that is. I'll go to the next one. I go to Picture Texture Fill, I go navigate to my file folder, I'll pick this one, uh, I want to tile it, uh, I'm going to leave that just like it is, I go to the next one, go to Picture, oops, sorry, go to Picture and Texture Fill, go to the next image, and so as you can see, as long as I have set up my documents, my files with all the paper that I want. Let's go to 50% again for these little dragonflies. Then I can easily and quickly and rapidly make all of these books and pull in all of these pictures. Now again, because of the version of PowerPoint that you have, it may look slightly different but trust me, all of these controls are all part of PowerPoint. And I can even make it smaller if I wanted to, right? And I can align top, that changes it. I can make it left. So, you know, you want to play around with some of these uh, different things so that your book can look slightly different from everybody else's, especially if you're using textured paper that other people might have gotten. So we'll do this one. I kind of like it like that. Do I want it big like that? What's just more interesting? I kind of like that. So again, you can see how rapidly I can go through and take this textured paper and I can rapidly uh, make, you know, 40, 50 covers that I then will, well, that was weird, wasn't it? That I can, um, Make that 50%. All right, that's kind of weird, isn't it? 
I guess I like it better that way. Um, so you just want to play around with it. And let's just do the rest of these real quick. Since I'm on a roll. And you know, you get textured patterned paper from all over the place. So I just click on that. And we'll do that last one here that we have. So as I mentioned, you know, this is how I quickly, rapidly make 50 covers at a time. Um, by just thinking ahead, having all my, all my colors, all my files in one folder, then I can rapidly um, just crank these out. Uh, and then now I'll turn this into a PDF. And then as I show in my course, I then um, will turn these into individual PDFs to upload to KDP. Uh, one of the other things, just really quickly, all you have to do is if you want to change this spine to make it a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit more interesting, you notice that this now says format shape instead of background shape. So all I have to do is go here, take my eyedropper, and maybe I want to go with the rust color, or maybe I want to go with the green color. Let's go here, let's try that one. So you can play around and make sure that you're matching your spines with uh, these. I think it's just a slightly different technique, so they're not just the boring black um, sort of tape that goes on old-fashioned books. I think it's kind of nice to have them matching. So um, if you're interested to know my techniques, of course, in my course, uh, Journal Tsunami, I go through step-by-step -step how I create these covers and how I export them and then how I upload a tsunami of journals to Amazon without using any sort of automated programs. You can still create lots and lots of books rapidly, quickly, and in a way that's in compliance with Amazon. So have a great day. Just wanted to share this with you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.